was very successful. Then one day, they got a phone call from India. It was Rameshwar Prabhu. He told Ganesham and Mahabudi Prabhus that we have had a long talk with Srila Prabhupada. Satsurup Goswami was also present. And Prabhupada wants to establish his books in the universities and in the libraries of the universities throughout all of America. And how he wants to do it? He wants to have a system of selling standing orders. At that time, there was only a few books out. But all the books that Prabhupada was intending to write and publish, they were going to sell those. He said, you should sell complete sets of Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, and all other books to the colleges, professors, and libraries. Now at that time, Srimad Bhagavatam was only up to about the fourth canto, and Chaitanya Charitamrita hadn't even come out yet. They had to go to the colleges and universities with just a photocopy of the cover of volume one of Chaitanya Charitamrita and convince them to buy, and every time a book is published, you will get it. And Rameshwar Prabhu said that Prabhupada has already named your party. He's named it the BBT Library Party, specially for selling complete sets of his books to the colleges and universities. Begin in America, and then go all over the world. This was a bewildering instruction. But Mahabodhi Prabhu told me that Ganasham and him went out the first day they had amazing success. And Ganasham, he would just pray so intensely to Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda to empower him to serve his guru. He was always praying like this, an intense spirit of prayer. He simply wanted to serve and please his spiritual master. It was his one-pointed, exclusive desire in life. He personified the Gita's teaching. Vyavashayatma ka budhir eke hakurunandana those who are on this path, Krishna says, they are resolute in purpose. Their aim is one. The intelligence of those who are irresolute is many-branched. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his commentary of verse, verse explains, one must make the order of the spiritual master one's life and soul. That was Srila Prabhupada's focus. Ganesham Prabhu saw that focus in his Guru Maharaj and took that same spirit within the core of his heart. He prayed. He was so unbelievable. He would take any type of risk. Nothing was impossible. He would go to colleges and meet professors in the most remote departments that had nothing to do with Krishna consciousness by any common person's perspective. And he would just charm those professors so much to buy entire sets of Prabhupada's books. It was unbelievable. Mahabodhi Prabhu came to the conclusion that this Ganesham Prabhu is a mystic. He believed that he had mystic cities. Because otherwise, how can you convince these types of people in the way he was doing? They began at Yale University, then the universities around Philadelphia, and they had so much success that Ganesham Prabhu, Mahabudi Prabhu, Satsurup Goswami Maharaj, 
decided they would sell sets of Prabhupada's books to every single college and university in the entire United States of America. And they were doing, going from place to place. First they had a bus, then they broke up in vans, then so many other devotees joined the library party because they saw how much it was pleasing Prabhupada. One day, Ganasham Prabhu, Mahabudi Prabhu, they drove to a small college. The next day they were supposed to go to a large college, which was many hours away in distance. When they got to this small college, it was deserted. There was no cars in the parking lot. There was no one walking around. Then they found out that the college was closed that day. It was some sort of holiday. So Mahabudi said, well, let's get out of this place and let's go. Ganesham Prabhu said, no, let's, let's try it. Krishna will empower us. Let's try it. Mahabudi said, are you crazy? There's nobody here. All the offices are closed. The classrooms are closed. The whole college is closed. And they got in a big argument. And finally, Ganesham said, all right, but let me just go to the restroom and I'll be back in two minutes. So Ganesham went into the college and asked someone where the restroom was. All the halls were deserted. It was just some caretakers. And he went to the restroom. One hour went by. <laughs> two hours went by. Mahabudi Prabhu told me he was very agitated. He's sitting in the car, waiting for two hours when Ganesham Prabhu went to the toilet. Where is he? He was very much becoming disturbed. And then over two hours later, Ganesham Prabhu comes with his book bag around his shoulder over the hill, back to the car, opened the door, and he was beaming, smiling ecstatically. Mahabudi Prabhu was about to chastise him. Where were you? What is this? We were supposed to have gone two hours ago. But he decided, you know, this person is a mystic. I better hear what he has to <laughs> say. I better hear what he has to say. He said, as per his word, he went to the toilet. And when he was in the restroom, he happened to see somebody. And he made friends with that. He just started talking to the person who's just... You know what people do in restrooms? He, this person was going to the toilet. And Ganesham is talking to him while he's going to the toilet. And he made friends with him, and the person liked him. And it ended up the person was a professor. He happened to be a professor of Eastern religion. And after talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, the professor brought him from the toilet to his office. He said, actually, I'm not supposed to teach today. I just happened to come because I wanted to catch up on some extra work. But I'm so happy to meet you. Ganesham charmed his heart. For his own personal purposes, he bought a standing order of all Prabhupada's books. And then he took Bhagavad Gita and decided that he would use this as the textbook for his class for the next year. And Ganesham Prabhu said, well, what about your library? Can I, would they like a set of books too for your school library so all the students would have access? He said, well, the library is closed. He said, but the librarian is my friend. Let me call him at home. So he calls the librarian at home the librarian's wife says, actually, he went to the library. He forgot something there. <laughs> so he calls him at the library, and Ganesham Prabhu went to the library and just preached to the librarian. And within a few minutes, the librarian just was so won over by his qualities, by his compassion, by his enthusiasm, by his love, that the librarian bought an entire standing order of all Prabhupada's books for the university library. <laughs> Mahabharati Prabhu said, 
this is what he did at a small college that was closed. <laughs> Mahabodhi Prabhu asked him, how did you do that? And Ganesham Prabhu said, while I was walking to the toilet, I was heavily, heavily praying, heavily praying to Guru and Krishna to give me some service at this college, to give me the chance to serve them by expanding the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because I made that prayer miraculously, just the right people happen to be at the right place at the right time. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays. Nadanam na janam na sundarim kavitam vaja gadisha kamaye. Mama janamani janamani shwari bhavatad bhakti rahoite kitvai. I do not want wealth. I do not want beautiful women. I do not want name and fame. I do not want to be known as a great scholar. I do not even want liberation from suffering. My only intense prayer is that I may serve you unconditionally, birth after birth after birth after birth. This was Ganesham Prabhu's constant prayer. He simply wanted the opportunity to serve by helping Srila Prabhupada expend the Sankirtan movement. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.